success, like Destiny, has various paths. In La Liga 123, the strength of a dedicated support and the will to return to the promised land helped Rayo Vallegano to make their mark. After taking two paths with notable changes, of course, Vallecas experienced the joy of promotion again. Rayo worked with conviction and security this season. Despite the treacherous nature of Spain's highly competitive second tier. We began our journey to a dream on July the 11th. I only have words of thanks. These are the real protagonists, these players who have taken us to glory. After two seasons of reflection and growth in La Liga 1-2-3, Rayo brought top-flight football back to Vallecas. Led by coach Michel and with a group ready to achieve big things, they built a team capable of making the dedicated fans delighted. What happens outside the club is something that we try to represent with our values on the pitch. The club also tried to follow through with this in our day-to-day -day lives, and I think that this is very good. They tried to eliminate barriers, not just between players, but also between football and what happens on the streets. We give everything for the team, and they don't care if the results are good or bad. With what we give to them, everyone will be behind us to the death. Humility, courage, a fighting spirit and a ferocious hunger have become indispensable elements to complement the innate talent of a group of players who are more like a family. The best neighbourhoods share something in their blood and few areas are more supportive of their local team than Vallecas. In terms of the neighborhood, nothing has changed. If you walk through Vallecas, you still see humble, hardworking people. You live in the neighborhood, you experience everyday life with your friends. And for me, this hasn't changed. Michel's first full season in charge at Rayo, there was a notable restructuring of the squad. It's good that there's a hierarchy, as long as there's respect. A very important thing is that the veterans should be an example to the others. I'm lucky in that respect because I have a group of veterans who give an example every day. Then there's a group of young players who are constantly breaking down barriers. They're unstoppable. He's always been a great person with us. He's always been behind us. And his values are the same ones that Rayo have. The goalkeeping spot was left vacant as Gatsanigan Tomás Mejías left the club. Antonio retired. In came Alberto García, Mario Fernández and youngster Lucho García. In the defence, Rayo said goodbye to Nacho, Pablo Iñiguez, Kini, Rasvan Rat and Se Castro.
In their place arrived Abdullah Bar, Bayano and Emi Velázquez, Amaya Dorado, Alex Moreno and Galán stayed at the club and Sergio Aquieme moved up to the first team. Veteran captain Roberto Trasorras, who joined the club in 2011, left for pastures new. As did Baena, Cristallo, Ebert, Montiel, Jordi Gómez, Antoni Dovale. Fran Beltrán and Santi Comesaña remained, boosted by new arrivals Oscar Trejo, Unai López, Chori Dominguez and Pancho Cerro. In January, Rayo brought in Gorka Elustondo. Miku departed by Yegas. And Las went out on loan. Diego Aguirre, Adrián Embarba, Manucho, and Javi Guerra were the attack for the season, aided by the addition of Raul de Tomás in the summer. And further reinforcements were added in the form of the returning Bebe and Emiliano Armenteros in winter. With David Coveño and Michel choosing the personnel, Rayo paid out no money in the transfer market despite having earned funds from the sale of Miku. The first five match days allowed Rayo to remain aware of the difficult nature of La Liga 1-2-3. Despite winning their opening game against Oviedo away, their tally from the first handful of matches was just six points. They took three draws and lost 3-0 against Osasuna at Vallecas on match day four. They then took four points from six, drawing in Seville and beating Cultural Leonesa 3-1. I think we needed this victory, especially at home in front of our fans, in order to take a leap up in the table and gain confidence with our results. We had been playing well and working hard, but we needed a victory, and we want to make it two in a row, something that we haven't done yet, and win away from home. Rayo would lose again on match day seven at El Alcoraz. The defeat to Huesca marked a turning point, and Mitel's men would then go six games unbeaten. Three wins and three draws put them seventh on match day 13, just a point off the playoff spots. One has to set out the best objectives, and the best objective is promotion. We're going for that, and we'll see if we achieve it. On match day 14, the Madrid-based side visited La Romareda and suffered a slim defeat. This 3-2 loss to Zaragoza was followed up by another important run for Rayo. Six unbeaten games. This time with four wins and two draws, put them in the playoff spots at the halfway point of the season, five points off leaders Wesca. Despite losing to Nastic on match day 21, in the 10 games thereafter, Rayo were the stand outside in La Liga 1-2-3. Taking 22 points from a possible 30, they moved into the top spot and made the most of Wesca hitting a dip in form. The good dynamic is down to us having a good group, everyone pulling in the same direction, and that we do what the coach wants us to do on the pitch. There was a loss on their visit to El Molinón, but from then on, the results were largely positive. Consecutive defeats to Córdoba and Alcorcón could not prevent Rayo Vallecano from sealing promotion on the penultimate match day, beating Lugo and Vallecas.
Rayo Vallecano were the second top scoring side in La Liga 1-2-3 this past season. They scored 67 goals during the campaign and here are the pick of the bunch. an advantage here and it's a good advantage oh what a strike inside the near post a screamer with his right foot to make it 3-1 Adrian Imbarba chance what a goal and that could mean they are up back in la liga santander that's a goal that can change everyone live wearing the rayo vallecano shirt today and it's a joy for the fans as well Tomas picks up the ball on the edge of the box. Plenty of path to beat defenders in front of him. Oh, he finds a way through. Still Raul de Tomas and he finishes it off. What a wonderful goal from this wonderful striker. 3-1 to Rayo Vallecano. Nice touch. He's tracked with the ball. Oh my goodness me, what a goal. Treco with an absolute beauty, he put Rayo in front and the goalkeeper didn't know much about it. Is Raul de Tomas still there? He's gonna go for goal, what a goal, Raul de Tomas! And the madness around Vallecas is absolutely justified. They cannot believe it. Rayo joint leaders in Liga 1, 2, 3, level. The Rayo dream team for 2017-18 consists of the following 11 players. Alberto Garcia, one of the leaders of the team. Strong with his hands and his feet, he earned his third promotion to La Liga Santander. Bayano. He provided a presence in the attack, but he also balanced the defence for a side that took risks with the ball. Chechu Dorado. He was part of a solid foundation for the team at the back. He was a vital leader for the squad. Emiliano Velázquez, Abdullah Ba. The pair alternated as partners for Dorado in the defence. They offered freshness, dynamism and options for bringing the ball upfield. Alex Moreno. He enjoyed his best season as a professional. Dominating the left wing, he contributed in both defence and attack. Fran Beltran. A homegrown talent who left it all on the field of play. A tireless worker, creative and a key player for Rayo. Unai Lopez. His ability going forward saw him frequently getting on the ball, moving between the lines and making an impact in the final minutes. Oscar Trejo. His genuine talent was already well known. His dribbles, goals, assists and hard work made the difference. Adrian Embarba, the top assist provider in the division. He improved his finishing and continued to be as impressive as ever getting to the byline. His characteristics were a big benefit to the team. Santi Comesaña, he found the perfect style to shine. He interpreted his quality in the best way to adapt to the coach's ideas. Raul de Tomas, the on-loan striker emerged as a prolific goal scorer. He scored in all manners and was a constant threat up front.
A clear idea and excellent execution took Rayo to glory. Whether they were winning or losing, the fans of Vallecas continued to support their team and spur them on to promotion. Hard work, hard work, hard work in being a team. They gave their all for Rayo Vallecano. The only thing that I've asked of the players is to always give everything and that everyone feels proud that they are representing them on the pitch. They've done that. After a season in which Michel's side had to overcome some tricky moments, the year ended with joy. Rayo Vallecano are back in the big time and they got there by staying true to their style. In history, there's a special place reserved for stories that went completely off script. Success is achieved against all odds. Take, for example, the story of David and Goliath. La Liga 1-2-3 is one of the most difficult leagues in the world to get out of. Despite this, Sociedad Deportiva Huesca successfully made their way to the promised land of the first division for the first time, thanks to their commitment and their entertaining football. As the famous saying goes, it was third time lucky for the team with St George's Cross, who've managed to improve their league position for three consecutive years in La Liga 1-2-3. After reaching the playoffs last year, in 2018, Wesca managed to avoid the precarious knockout stage and leave the summer free for preparing for top flight football. The objective that West can have is that which the president and the owner have established, which is achieving safety and getting the 50 points required to stay up. However, it's true that we can change our message, if not our objective. The objective is the same as always. When you have some money and you have a plan for the season, the aim is what it is. Later on, if we can aspire to better things, exceeding our objectives, then what we've always had in mind is going beyond that. We'll do it. I think that this is the key to success. As the coach says, we all get on well, we all work together. We all understand what the coach wants to transmit, what Wesker want. The club, the coach, the fans and the players are all on the same page. Wesker have been through highs, lows, big wins and moments of uncertainty right to the triumphant end. However, there's been one common theme. Whatever happens, they've never got carried away. With Juan Antonio Anquela leaving the club and joining Real Oviedo, Ruby began the season in the hot seat at Huesca with a rejuvenated squad. 
They're a team that had a very good season, and so we were aware that although our idea of how to play might be very different to last year, we had to have a lot of respect for what was there before, and the human side as well. They were a team that performed at a good level. That isn't always going to be repeated the next year, but using that good level as a starting point, we had to add to it so that the team would start out that way. That was the idea. Then you have to get the signings right. In goal, Alex Remiro joined Huesca on loan from Athletic Club. He was accompanied by Ander Bardají, and Roberto Santa Maria came in during the winter transfer window. The moves were made to cover the departures of Sergio Herrera, who'd left for Osasuna, Javi Jiménez, and Keiko Piña, who'd retired at the end of the previous season. In defence, Jorge Pulido and Rulo were both signed. Cesar Soriano and Jesús Valentín left the club. The back line remained largely the same, however, with Jade Amador, Carlos Acapo, Inigo López, Carlos David, Raiko Prezancic and Nagore continuing at El Alcoraz. The West Ham midfield was bolstered with the arrivals of Luso and Alex Gallar. An astute winter loan deal brought Moy Gomez over from Sporting Gijón. Meanwhile, Samu Saeed moved to England. And Frank Bambok and David López departed as well. Players like Juanjo Camacho, Juan Aguilera, Gonzalo Melero, Luis Sastre, David Ferreiro, Álvaro Badillo, Kilian Grant and Alexander González stayed on for 2017-18. In attack, wholesale changes were made with three loan deals. Ezequiel Rescaldani, Chimi Ávila and Cucho Hernández replaced Borja Lázaro and Vinicio Araujo. Huesca's restructuring was undertaken according to the plans made by Ruby and Emilio Vega. The sales of Sergio Red and Samu Saith also meant that they turned a profit. The only player for whom they paid money was Alex Gallar, who joined from Cultural Leonesa. The summer of 2017 saw a shake-up in Aragon with a change of coach and a rejuvenated squad. The adaptation process needed time, and after five match days, Huesca had only one win at El Alcoraz. In the lower half of the table, Ruby's men continued to play passing football and found the dynamic that would lift them to the top. A two-man strike force led the way for goals with 11 of the team's 13. We knew when we signed him that we were bringing in a good player. However, from the moment he set foot on the training pitch for pre-season, we were sure of it. He's a player who I'm sure is going to be a sensation. When you sign him, you have to see how he adapts. But it was such a quick process for him, and he's so hungry. The ball played through to Cucho Hernández, one on one, and it's in the back of the net. Goal for Huesca, goal again for Cucho Hernández at the Mediterranean Game Stadium. Juan Camilo Cucho Hernández and Gonzalo Melero led the way in a 10 game unbeaten run for Huesca. Excellent performances at El Alcoraz form part of the streak. Against Zaragoza and the Aragon derby, Huesca earned a win that marked a turning point for the season. On that cold night in Huesca, the home side moved joint top with a masterclass. The shot from Pucho, oh it's in the top corner! The Aragon derby is going to go to Huesca against Real Zaragoza. A scorcher of a goal from Cucho Hernández. We know that El Alcoraz has to be a fortress. Whatever points we get away from home are welcome, but here we need to be strong. This ground is a little special, but for us it's our home and we have to try to be strong here. We need to scrape points on our travels too, and we're doing a fairly good job. The next match day, a 10-minute Cucho Masterclass gave Huesca the top spot in La Liga 1-2-3. 
they would stay there for the following 16 games. We're going to play, we're going to have fun, and we're going to enjoy ourselves on the pitch, but we're also going to suffer at times. It's true that if the games are going by and we're still up there, then we'll be fighting for it. Huesca beat Osasuna at home, although the game also saw Cucho Hernández pick up an injury that kept him out for seven weeks. It was the first of three tight victories for the team, which culminated their second 10-game unbeaten run of the season. At the end of match day 26, Huesca were the side to beat. They held an 11-point advantage over third place Rayo Vallecano. However, the physical demands of their playing style began to take its toll. Losing four times in their next eight matches lost them top spot. Valladolid managed to beat Huesca in the final minutes of their game. But the most painful defeat was suffered at Vallecas, where Rayo won after a whirlwind opening half hour. Gucho returned to action for a home game against Inform Sporting. Melero missed the game through suspension, and Huesca lost at El Alcoraz in a shock result. A run of 409 days unbeaten at home came to an end, and Huesca lost top spot to Rayo Vallecano. The second Aragon derby went to Los Blanquillos, and Huesca reacted. Rubi's side returned to form, and Melero and Cucho found their scoring boots again, bagging eight goals in Huesca's four consecutive victories from mid-April, taking them back to the automatic promotion spots. From there, they earned promotion to La Liga on a magical Monday night against Lugo at the Ancho Carro. Sociedad Deportiva Huesca were one of the most prolific sides in La Liga 1-2-3 this season. They scored a total of 61 goals in the 2017-18 campaign. Here are the top five. And Gallardo scores. 3-0 on his first touch. And Ace Gallardo. The scores an absolute beauty. The free kick from Cucho Hernandez into the top corner. Stunning goal for Huesca. Another one for the Colombian striker. It's Cucho Hernandez. Played in by David Ferreiro. What a finish by Jorge Pulido with the back heel. The centre-half scores his first goal of the season. And Agüesca are well on their way to the top flight. However, that is an immediate response from Huesca. Cucho Hernandez. With one of the best goals he has scored. The cross from Ferreiro, overhead kick, oh, it's into the top corner. What a finish from Alex Gallar, stunning goalkeeper Pavel Kishek. And Huesca take the lead against Cordoba.
Our best 11 for West Ham in the 2017-18 season consists of the following players. Alex Remiro. Athletic Club can be happy with the showing from the goalkeeper they loaned out to Wesker this season. The 23-year-old was the first-choice stopper and was a safe presence between the sticks. Carlos Acapo, Alexander Gonzalez. The pair shared the right-back spot this term. Both offered a strong presence on the wing and some dangerous crosses. Jorge Pulido. He enjoyed his best season to date. Dominant in the air and very secure in one-on-ones. Jair Amador, a man who made the difference in the defence. One of the fastest defenders in the league, he also helped the team with his goals from set pieces. Rajko Brezancic, he took a step up from the previous season and his defensive improvement made him an undisputed starter on the left. Juan Aguilera, the heart of Huesca. His determination, solidity and teamwork helped keep the team balanced in midfield. Luis Sastre, intelligent and willing to make sacrifices. Most attacking moves go through him. His arrivals from the second line of attack gave him several goals. Gonzalo Melero, a versatile player ready for the top level. His fitness and great control of the ball combined with an eye for goal. A lethal penalty taker. David Ferreiro, a nightmare for opposition defences. One of the wingers capable of causing the most problems in the entire division. He was a constant threat in attack for Huesca. Chimi Avila, Alex Gallar. The pair were an ideal combination in the front line. They offered hard work and important goals in the toughest moments of the season. Juan Camilo Cucho Hernández, Huesca's on loan Colombian star. Aged just 19, he became one of the most feared players in the league. His powerful shot and speed inside the box made him hard for opponents to deal with. We've made history with this club. It was something that was unthinkable at the start of the season, and our hard work and effort has meant we've achieved it. We're excited and really happy with what we've done. I don't think that we can believe it ourselves yet. I can't even think right now what we've achieved hasn't sunk in yet. When we get to the hotel to celebrate, I'll think about what we've done and what this dressing room has achieved during the entire year. We've worked really hard, and this isn't an easy division. We've made history, and we've made a small city feel very big. You can imagine the joy. I'm really proud of this team. They deserved it. From the first game, we showed our good football. The nicest thing is making the Huesca fans happy, which is what they deserve. We've competed with everyone as equals, and we don't consider ourselves to be inferior to anyone. We're the first side to be promoted. We believe we're the best. We've tried to show that in every game, and we've got the promotion that we really wanted. For history to be made, you have to push. The first step to making a dream reality is believing in it.
Real Valladolid boasts a glorious past and a promising future, but have spent several years battling to return to the top flight. Four seasons in La Liga 1-2-3 in which they fell in the playoffs, finished in the bottom half of the table and missed out by a single goal, saw Valladolid struggle to go back up. But just when it seemed as if their moment had passed, the sleeping giants awoke. There was a change in the dugout. Sergio Gonzalez and Diego Rivera came in to turn the team's fortunes around, and they would lead them to a 43rd season in La Liga Santander. We're here celebrating something historic. Enjoy it and treasure it, because a lot of work has gone into this from the coaching staff, the players, and the people of Valladolid. It's a dream come true for everyone, and I hope that next season we have your support every Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be very important. The season began with Luis César San Pedro at the helm and with demanding competition for promotion. Valladolid showed their goal-scoring potential early on. At the same time, difficulties in keeping a clean sheet and turning goals into wins meant that the board had to take a big decision. They put Sergio González in charge for the final stages of the campaign and from then on the team found form, gained in confidence and turned into an unstoppable side. Sergio has seen a lot of football whilst he's been out of a coaching job and he's prepared himself thoroughly for any opportunity that might come about. I think that he knew the Segunda División and the way the teams play in this league, as well as knowing about our club. He's managed to bring the group even closer together, and that wasn't easy. We already had a very cohesive group. He's made it so that everyone gives their all, and those who were less frequently featured gave their all when called upon. They're all doing that with pleasure, to contribute to the team, and that has favoured us in getting to where we are now. It's really nice to be able to go to the Bernabeu or to the Camp Nou. In the end, almost all the grounds are good, but the difference is amazing. The difference is huge even for the city. When Luis César San Pedro took over as Real Valladolid coach, he carried out a thorough overhaul of the squad. This group was inherited by Sergio González and developed into a playoff winning team. In goal, Pau Torres left the club and Jordi Masip was brought in. Isaac Becerra stayed but was reduced to a role as second choice keeper. Four defenders were let go, Alex Pérez, Luciano Balbi, Rafa Lopez and Samuel Yorca coming in to replace them were Antonito, Nacho, David and Kiko Olivas, with Fernando Calero brought up to the first team. Moyano, Angel Garcia and Guitian continued, although the latter two left in the winter transfer window, whilst during that same period, Borja Herrera arrived on loan. In midfield, Borja Fernandez, Oscar Plano, Antonio Cotan, Pablo Herrevias and Giannis Giannotas were signed. They filled the gap left by the departure of José Anaith, Victor Pérez, André Leao, Guzmán and Juan Jordán. Mitchell and Anua remained and Sergio Marcos was taken on loan from Cultural Leonesa in the winter. Joining at the same time as Javi Ontiveros and Saudi Arabian player Nua Al Musa. Up front, Vian de Tomas left, but the blow was softened by Jaime Mata staying. Having the same base this year has meant that the new players have adapted much better and straight away. With more players staying on, we all know each other better and everything is quicker. In the end, you can see this in the adaptation to how we play. Whilst Divan Salvador started the season with Valladolid, he would leave in the winter. Asier Villalibre spent just six months at the club after joining in the summer 
the same as Chris Ramos and Tony Martinez when they were signed in the second half of the campaign. Valladolid had a promising start to the season. After 10 match days, San Pedro's side were in the playoff spots, with a record of five wins, two draws and three defeats. But competition was fierce and Valladolid were just two points off the top of the table. On match day 11, a draw at home against Lugo saw them fall out of the playoff positions. And the trend was clear. Valladolid had no problems scoring goals, but they did have problems in defence and the lack of away wins and inconsistent results put them at risk of not getting the points required. I think that, without it being an exceptional season for us, we're up there. We've taken a lot of points at home, and we are one of the best home sides in the division. It's on the road where we have to improve. With the team mid-table lacking a definitive push for higher places, the board considered taking action. They did so after match day 34, sacking the coach after a defeat away to Nastic. Sergio Gonzalez and Diego Rivera came in his place, and their first game in charge, Valladolid suffered a slim loss to lead as Sporting. But from then on, the team grew in strength and confidence and experienced a new positivity and upturning results, allowing them to place fifth in the table. Valladolid were in the playoff spots. We found it hard to be consistent and pick up three or four wins in a row. It's been a tough year in which we've been through some bad moments, but we've also had some good times. And the most important thing is that we're in our best form and we've got to the end of the season with every chance of promotion. In the semi-finals, they find themselves up against Sporting once again and with a better side in both games against the Asturians. In the final, Numancia stood in their way. A phenomenal first leg and a solid display in the second game capped off a superb two months as Vidalid earned the third spot available in La Liga Santander. Vidalid were the top scoring side in La Liga 1 2 3 this season. They found the net 69 times over the course of the regular campaign with a further four goals in the playoffs. Here are the top five strikes from Vidalid in 2017-18. Mitchell for Jaime Mata. Good chance for Jaime Mata. Mitchell, Mata again, the cross. Mitchell with the volley. And it's a wonderful goal for Valladolid. What a one-two. with Mitchell and Jaime Mata. Trick, he does! Oh, my word! What a finish into this near post here of Marinho's goal! Shot is set up, oh, and it's called the goalkeeper wrong footed. Vyrolid get their second goal. Mourinho adjusted late. Vyrolid play to uh, Jaime Mata, he tries to go inside, puts it onto his right foot, swings the ball in, and Vyrolid get a massive goal at El Molinona. Mata, who has been in scintillating scoring form all season. You know, now, can finally finish this off in style? Hami Mata ducks inside, rounds one player and smashes the ball in. Finally, are going on to La Liga Santander. And they do so in style with the final kick of the game. Best 11 for Real Valladolid in the 2017-18 season consists of the following players. Jordi Masip, an ever-present in goal, he showed his agility between the sticks and his ability to bring the ball out with his feet. 
The welcome from my teammates has been really good. I'm delighted to be here and uh, to be enjoying myself so much at Valladolid. Antonito, his speed down the right made him an ideal addition to attack, despite the risks of leaving space behind. Kiko Olivas, he became a regular starter and took on additional responsibility as the season progressed. David Calero. David was one of the leaders of the side until injury sidelined him. Youth product Calero was an extraordinary replacement. Javi Moyano. His defensive solidity and versatility allowed him to perform well on either side of the defence. Borja Fernández. His experience, vision and presence was key in the middle of the park. His goals and charisma strengthened the team during their resurgence. Luismi, Michel. The pair both had runs as starters due to injuries, but proved different alternatives for the coach. Tony Villa. His talent was a difference maker for the team. His end to the season was sublime, and he came through just at the right time. Pablo Hervias. His speed, confidence, finishing and ability to provide assists gave the team plenty of goals. It was his best season to date. Oscar Plano. Although he was frequently played on the wing, it was in the middle that he really showed his talent, scoring goals and working hard for the team. Jaime Mata, the linchpin of the squad. He broke the top marksman record for the second division and fittingly scored the last goal of the season with the last kick of the playoff final. We're all joking about me being the top scorer, and I'm the first to laugh about how well things have gone. In the end, it's something good. You have to treat it like that. Being up there with the great strikers in the Segunda División is a source of pride for me. Real Valladolid benefited from an inspired final stretch of the campaign to reach an objective that at times seemed unlikely. Over such a long season, Valladolid suffered along the way, but were able to turn things around at just the right moment. The recovery brought joy to one of Spanish football's most historic sides, and next season, the José Zorrilla will host top-flight football once again. The main feeling I have is joy for everyone who really believe, for everyone who has suffered during our time in the Segunda Division, which is usually very tough. There's personal satisfaction as well in the fact that the work has been done well. When you achieve this, you don't need anyone to tell you that you've done a good job. We've shown that if we have the chance to continue this work, then we can do things even better.